we're back. We're back in, I was about to say we're back in sunny Spain, but it's not really that sunny. It's about 15 degrees, it's overcast, but I don't care, because I'm gonna go ride. Today looks like the worst day of the weather. I've just flown in this morning. I had planned to do, like, start this vlog, leaving the house and getting to the airport and all them jazz, but there was that much snow at my house last night, it was all on not to fall on my ass getting out of the driveway this morning, so that was a bit stressful, worrying if the motorway was gonna be open and stuff. Anyway, we got the flight, we're here now, picked the car up, literally just pulled into services and got something to eat and a quick coffee and I'm ready to head to the track. So this time we're going to Cartagena. I'm not, I'm not on my own bike. I've borrowed a bike out here. The guy's been kind enough to let me use his bike. So I'm going to go today, get that sorted out with tyres. I am the least organised person at this track day by 200% or anyone else that's ever done a track day. But I really wanted to ride, especially now with the news out about Daytona and stuff. So once the guy said I could use the bike, I thought, you know what, good, I'll figure the rest of it out when I get there. So that is the current situation. We're going to Cartagena this time so I'm a bit excited about that and it's not an amazing track or anything like that but it's different I've been to Almeria and Andalusia quite a lot let's get on the road actually get there oh has that steering wheel been in this the whole time sorry about that can you try and be a bit more productive please watch me it just feels like I'm uh, paying you quite a lot of money and not a lot of results oh you just uh, brush that comment off Oh, wipers are a bit hard. I don't think they've been used for a while. You know what? I don't reckon I've ever been this nervous going to a track day, but I think it's literally just because I'm so unorganized or unprepared. Not unorganized, because I couldn't do anything to organize what I'm trying to do. I couldn't bring a front stand on the airplane with me. Unprepared is probably the right word, so I don't think I've ever been this worried about going. Oh, there's English Reg. wonder if they've got a front stand. I've ever been this worried about going to a track day, so wish me luck. Let's see. Right, I've just got out for, well, got out and got back in again for a quick mooch and chat the guys uh there's another track day on at the minute you can obviously see that from the bikes and stuff when we're pulling in so the guys aren't unloading our truck until five o'clock but i'm gonna nip into town now go sort the hotel out we just looked at a few on the computer it's like 50 euros gonna go sort that out and then come back at five because it's only 23 o'clock now so I'll nip, it's like 10 minutes away, 40 euros a night. So that's cheaper. I normally stay, them last few track days, I stayed at my father-in-law's house, which is like down Grouch away, but that's like an hour and a half from here, plus the toll, so it's gonna be more in diesel getting there and back and three hours driving for 40 euros, I'm just gonna stay in the hotel. So we're gonna go sort that now, and then come back and then unload the bike. Right, this is what 40 euros a night looks like. We're gonna go in here and have a look. At least there's a family walking out, so it can't be that bad. What are we saying? <laughs> what are we saying out of 10? Oh, God. I wish it wasn't a tight bastard that it stayed somewhere nice, but we just need, as long as it's clean and it's a bed, it's better than driving an hour and a half each way. Let's go see. We're checked in. It's definitely not uh, five stars, but we're definitely pushing on two, so let's go see the room. Just come back to grab my bags. Let's go see what we're, what we're dealing with. The room card looks posh. Look at that. Being 211. Oh, wrong What are we saying? What are we saying? 214. A few stains in the carpet, but. Right, come on. Be honest in the comments. Would you stay in this? Oh, let's put that in. Oh, I even got a washing machine. What more would you want? Cooker. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. I've done that about 50 times. Right, let's go back to the track. Right, we're back at the track. 
it's I thought they would have started unloading now. They said they're gonna unload at five and it's about half five, but I don't know whether that's just because it's absolutely pissing down again. So I'm gonna nip in, see what's up with the guys and what the situation is with the truck. So I could ideally do with getting the bike out and stuff tonight to at least see what we've got to work with. So stick with me on that one. So now the next morning, like seven or whatever. Last night didn't go to plan. The lorry with the bikes and stuff in was there, but they ended up bringing my bike separately in another van and stuff because they had to go back and get some other things. So we didn't end up getting it out, but the guy said they were gonna drop it in the garage for me late on last night. So I'm getting up a bit earlier to go and get the things sorted this morning. We're still no further on as to what we have. They reassured me that they've got some of the things. I've luckily ended up bumping into some lads from Ireland that I've known since I started racing. So I'm gonna go in the same garage as them. Things are looking promising. Look forward to getting the track and seeing what we can sort. Right. Oh, here we go. Round two. Is she gonna be in the garage? I think so, but let's go see. Look at all these big race teams. I'm just looking for a front stand. Oh my days. Get in. Right, now I need to go and oh look, they've even put a piece of chocolate on it. You know what? I preach on about like things and this is not me selling it or whatever, but bike promotions has to be one of the best track day companies I've ever went to or been to or even been involved with. Who else would sort that out for you and bring the bike and do things like that? So yeah, big thanks to them first of all. Right, I'm gonna go and get some bits now that I need or try and get some bits. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Got a front stand, got tire warmers, got an extension lead. We are in business. And a lot of you might recognize this bike because this is the bike that the guy, when I crashed my fire blade, the guy let me use it. And that, yeah, it is the same bike. For any of you people that watch that vlog and seen that, this is the same bike. And the, this bike is actually going to be for sale. Um, it's just been built, rebuilt by Yart and refreshed. They built it originally and then refreshed and stuff. So it is going to be for sale at some point, whenever. Probably in April time or something like that. If any of you out there are interested in buying a really nice R1 that I can actually vouch for, it's, uh, it's going to be for sale. But yeah, I'm peaking. So I've got my tire warmers, got my extension lead. I'm going to go pump the front tire up, check tire pressures do all them things and then get my kit bag and stuff out of the van or the car which is the only things i actually have with me so things are looking good i'm excited look okay, at this for service so this is one of the men that i was talking about uh john o'grady uh, i've known john since i started racing his son emmett races uh another lad out with, out with them as well he's kindly <laughs> helped me out he's let me use the airline tire pressure gauge tools so if you've noticed I've took the tank cover off I don't like the big tank cover on the bike so I took it off to make it more like a standard bike it comes with that it's like a, I think they call it a super bike cover but yeah I don't like the feeling of it so yeah I've, I've proper fall on my feet here with these boys being, being in next door and being able to use their tools and even fuel jug and everything because obviously my fuel's coming that and I'm not pouring that into there so Happy days, but yeah, I've got my kit and stuff out now, signed on, done all that, uh, we're ready to go, riding more bike. Right, so, the shit has hit the fan, um, crashed, not of my own accord unfortunately, that is massively frustrating, but it could have been worse, it could have been either a faster corner or whatever, a lot of ifs and buts, but either which way, I broke my tib and my fib, literally in the first session. I went to the hospital, uh, got scans and everything, and they wanted to operate there, but I honestly wanted to get home, so I signed myself out last night, uh, got back to my beautiful hotel room, and um, I booked the flight back today, so I'm gonna go up to the airport now, and then, yeah, get back home and get hopefully straight into the hospital either tonight or tomorrow and see if we can get it operated on or get it operated on. But yeah, so massively frustrated, but um, I'll say it. the only thing I can say, the people at the track day, so uh, Pammy and Thomas and the guys have been unbelievable with getting me out of the hospital, bringing stuff to the hospital, bringing me back here tonight, getting me to the chemist, 
uh, to pick some drugs up, get me to get some crutches, sorting the bike out. They've been absolutely unbelievable. I wanted to give a special thanks to them and everybody involved in bike promotions for their help. I could not have done it without them, so massive thank you. And I don't know if this is going to be the end of the vlog or I'll do some more video when I get to the hospital or what the situation is. Ciao for now and thanks for watching. And if it's not the end, I'll see you in a minute. I have to figure out how I'm going to get around it. Right, so I'm, I'm obviously home and stuff now and I wanted to like jump on, and then, this is a few weeks later, I wanted to jump on and just say a few things. Firstly, I've delayed in putting this out because I wanted to try and understand the injury and see what was happening. But secondly, I was honestly wary about what people were going to think and, and say or whatever. So that was the other reason. I just want to make it clear that the, the, there was nothing wrong with the bike. Part actually broke, like an R-clip broke on the on the pad. So it's, it wasn't a mechanical fault to the bike or anything. It was literally a, a part. So it was no one's fault involved in the bike or anything. Obviously the bike had been back to yard and just literally been serviced by a professional a place. So there was no issue with that. But more of the issue I was thinking of is like people are going to say, oh, why on earth is he out there riding another bike or doing that on his own and everything? And honestly, because it, that was the only, I needed to ride a bike and that was my only option at the time. We had no other bikes at home in England to use as a team. I was out there on my own because that was the only sort of thing available to me at the time as well and I wanted to ride so I wouldn't advise breaking your leg and then getting straight on a plane the next day. Obviously that was the thing I thought was the right thing to do in my head to get it done and I might have told a few lies to the airline or whatever to make that possible but um, from a medical term I've figured out now that that is really not a good thing to do i got quite a lot of grief off the doctors and stuff when i got back to, to england to get my operation so i've got some other vlogs coming up now of what's happened i've been in for two operations since then uh, the current situation and stuff so i'm gonna sort of like do what we did the last time and bring you guys along through the journey and uh yeah just be honest and transparent and let you all know what's happening and what's going to happen next and a time frame as to how long i'm going to be injured for and stuff it's all going to come up in next week's vlog Thanks for game for watching. Yeah? Yeah? You have fun? Hi mate.